In this uh, video, we'll be talking about DNA fingerprinting. DNA fingerprinting. This technique was given by Alec Jeffrey. And this is the technique which is nowadays used for a person's unique identification which could be required for solving criminal cases or for solving paternity uh, issues or disputes. So let us first talk about the principle and then we will come to the method which is used and at the end we will take one example to understand the application of this. Now we know from the Human Genome Project the information that we have is that 99.9% .9 base pair sequence is common or same in all individuals. Is same in all. That means that DNA or genetic material which is responsible for giving the unique identification to an individual is only 0.1%. So that means it is only 0.1% base pair sequence which is different in different individuals. So this is the information that we have. Now if we want to separate this uniform or common uh, genetic material from this unique one we have to use density grade, gradient. That means if we separate it DNA separated on density gradient will give us two segments. We call them peaks because this is separated using density gradient. So the common one, the 99.9% .9 DNA will get separated, will get two such kind of peaks. One which is known as the bulk DNA, this is the one which is common in every individual. And this small peak, which is unique, is known as satellite DNA. And this is the one which has that 1.1% base pair sequence, which is different in different individuals. Important thing about this satellite DNA or the pieces of DNA which we are getting here is that it has repetitive DNA segments. That means there are certain sequences which are getting repeated a fixed number of times in different individuals. We'll take example to understand this. This satellite DNA is further classified on the basis of, so this classification is on the basis of three things. One, AP and CG ratio. That means the purine pyrimidine ratio that we are talking of. The second point on the basis of which we further divide it is the length. Length of the sequence. And third on the basis of which it is further categorized is how many times that particular sequence is getting repeated. Just to quickly understand what exactly we are talking of say in a particular segment there is a sequence called a t g and c and this segment or this particular sequence is getting repeated 10 times so that is what we mean say on chromosome number one of an individual a this sequence gets repeated 10 times so how many times the sequence is getting repeated the term which is used for such repeated numbers is called copy number. So the number of times the sequence repeats, which we call copy number. So on these three criteria, this satellite DNA is further separated into mini satellites and microsatellites. These mini satellites are used as VNTRs. The full form of VNTR is variable 
number tandem repeats that means how many times the sequence is getting repeated and these vntrs would be used as radio labeled probes so now what we are going to do in this and what alex jeffrey told us that when we separate the dna we get a bigger chunk which is called the bulk dna which is common in all individuals there is a smaller segment of dna which we get and that is known as satellite dna this satellite dna has repetitive segments of dna and this is the part of dna which is unique to every individual now on the basis of three criteria we separate this satellite dna into two categories mini satellites and micro satellite and the criteria which is used one is at or cg ratio second length whether it is long sequence or a shorter sequence so length of the sequence and third how many times that sequence is getting repeated which we call the copy number so we will be using this vntr radio labeled vntr probes to identify the dna or for dna fingerprinting each individual has its unique identification from this particular segment or we can say 0.1% of that dna which is unique to every individual that is what we want to print or scan the method which is used so if we talk of the method for dna fingerprinting the first step is going to be isolation of dna isolation of dna and how are we going to isolate that dna we have seen those processes in biotech you have to digest the cell wall or cell membrane whatever the cell has and then with, with the help of enzymes then take this dna out by adding chilled ethanol so that it precipitates and then we separate it out by spooling this process in detail we have already studied in biotechnology after we isolate then we have to break this dna into fragments that is known as digestion of dna by enzymes like endonucleases by endonucleases endonucleases are going to cut this dna into fragments third step we will separate those dnas or fragments by gel electrophoresis so separation by gel electrophoresis after the separation those fragments are on the gel normally the gel that we use is agarose gel and this agarose gel is not a permanent kind of a medium so we need to transfer it on a more stable medium like nitrocellulose membrane so that is known as blotting and blotting means we are transferring those fragments from the gel to nitrocellulose membrane which is a more durable membrane after that hybridization with radio label vntrs so then is hybridization with radio labeled vntrs and the last step is then studying this or seeing this or observing this using auto radiography So our step number six. I'm going to write the sixth step here using auto radiography to identify these radio label VNTRs. So now by using this uh, process, we have used these VNTRs with the DNA. hybridized with the dna and we can scan them or see them using auto radiography now we will take an example to understand how exactly this technique works 
and with the help of example it is going to be much more easier to understand this so let us talk about the example now say there are two individuals an individual a and an individual b and we are just taking an example and that is why we are talking about few chromosomes so this is chromosome number one of individual a and when we are drawing chromosome number one we need to talk about the homologous pair same thing in case of individual b so chromosome number one in case of a and b say here we are making these blocks and these blocks indicate that DNA sequence which is getting repeated a fixed number of times. So in this case say 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 blocks we have made. So we will write this number 5 here for our understanding that in chromosome number 1 of individual A, one of the homolog has that DNA sequence which is getting repeated 5 times. In the other chromosome, say this gets repeated three times. In individual B, say chromosome number is what we are talking about. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Say it is getting repeated nine times. Or maybe 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8 times. Let us keep it as 8. And in the other one, say we have it only two times. Let us take one more chromosome. Say we are talking of chromosome number two. And we can take any chromosome. We have to actually take all chromosomes or chromosomal pairs. So in this case also, we will make the homologous chromosome here. And for individual B also. In this chromosome, Again, there is a DNA sequence which is getting repeated a fixed number of times. 1, 2, 3, 4. Say it gets repeated 4 times. And here it is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 7 times. In case of individual B, this gets repeated 1, 2, 3, 4, say 5, 6 times. And in this individual, it gets repeated only one time. Let us take one more chromosome. Say chromosome number 3. And the same thing, again we will be drawing the homologous pair here. And in case of individual, B also. And again, let us take the number. Say here the numbers are 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10. And in this case, we can take the number as 1, 2, 3, 4, maybe 5. Or let us take 6. In case of individual B, let us talk about 1, 2, 3 and 4 of this. This was 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Here is 4. So here is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and maybe 7. Now when we cut these DNA fragments using endonuclease, we just now talked about the steps. The first step was isolation and then digestion. After digestion, we would get these segments cut. And when we separate them using gel electrophoresis, what we are going to get is a gel where these two individuals chromosomes with their de uh, definite number of repeats would get separated. So this will be the gel of individual A and B having their chromosomes. Now let us talk about this. Now when we cut this DNA and we are separating it using density gradient, the biggest piece will be at the top and the smallest piece will be at the bottom. So when we cut it, out of which this is going to be the biggest piece having 10 repeats. So if for our convenience, say we write it is 12 repeats, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2 
and 1. So this is the way these uh, segments get separated. So the one with 10, this would get separated here. It is going to have 10 pieces. Then the next number is 7. So this red one with 7 would get separated here because it has that DNA sequence getting repeated 7 times. So we are done with 10, 7. Let us talk about the 6th, the next number. So, with 6 repeats, the blue one will come here. Next is, after 6, we have the 5th one. So, this is going to be with 5 segments. Then, after 5, we have with 4, which is the red chromosome. So, this is with the 4 pieces. And then, the last one which remains is this with 3. So, this is how those DNA segments would get separated using gel electrophoresis in case of individual A. Now, let us see the gel after gel electrophoresis of individual B. Same thing is going to happen here also. The biggest one will become at the top and the lower, smaller ones will be at the bottom. So, here the bigger one is with the A. So, this A would come here which is going to have the A repeats then after eight we have the blue one with seven repeats so this blue one in this individual is going to come here lower than that next after seven we have the sixth one which is in red color so let us make this six here smaller than that so smaller segments are going towards the bottom of the gradient so six is done next is our with four so let us say this is our four segment repeat. Then we have with two. This is with two. And the last and the smallest one is with one. So this is how these pieces get separated. Let us check whether we have all chromosomes separated or not. So here there are two blues, two reds and two blacks. Here also black and black, blue, blue, red, red. So all chromosomes got separated. So after gel electrophoresis, this is how the gel is going to look or if we have transferred it on nitrocellulose membrane. After we hybridize it with VNTRs, we know that DNA segments are complementary. So if a VNTR goes and hybridizes it, we automatically know the sequence of this DNA because the VNTRs we have already studied so if VNTR has ATCG, this piece is going to have a complementary one and this VNTR will come and hybridize. Now this is the fingerprint of individual A and B. Suppose we are talking or we are trying to solve a case, a murder mystery. And from the site of that crime, we get some DNA through or from hair follicle or from blood cells or whatever sample we get from that crime scene. After performing the same process, that means we isolate the DNA and in that case we can also do PCR because we want to amplify that DNA. Reason being that we got only a small sample and that is the only proof or evidence that we have. So we can get multiple copies made using PCR and then the same scene. Now, we are talking about the gel of individual C. We don't know who that person is. This is the sample which we are getting from the crime scene. And for our reference, let us write down this 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. And suppose this one shows one small piece here. Then one chromosome here in front of two, one chromosome in front of four, one chromosome in front of six or one chromosome getting repeated. Then let us talk about a seven one also. So a seven is here and one more which is coming in front of eight. So if we compare this gel with these two who are probably the suspects or you know we are trying to shortlist then this individual
individual B had one segment which had repeats eight times. This also ha is having eight times. So this matches. In case of the next one, there is a blue chromosome which is getting repeated seven times. Then one is six times. Then one is four, two and one. So this and this, these two fingerprints, they match. And this would help us conclude that probably this one was the individual who was at the crime scene. So this is the sample which we get from there and these are the two fingerprints which we have and we are trying to reach to a conclusion. So with this we are able to conclude that individual B was responsible for whatever has happened by this DNA fingerprinting. So this is the application. Two applications we talked of in order to solve uh, murder case uh, mysteries or in case if there is any kind of paternity issues, the parental issues, then in that case, this DNA fingerprinting helps us solve those cases.